Space stations are just about the coolest thing that humanity has ever made. And I bet you some of you out there didn't know that there's actually two of them on orbit. There's the ISS, which everybody knows and loves. It's been up there doing some amazing science since before I was even born. But there's also a second one, a smaller but way more recent guy. And that is the Tiangong, or Chinese space station. So, you guys know this channel. We're gonna go take some pictures of them. Hopefully, with our newly refurbished, that was a lot of pain refurbishing this thing, but newly refurbished, big, big telescope. So it's time to go get some first light. Let's do this. But with the new hardware, we're also gonna need some new settings here, especially since I wanna wrap in my planetary camera. But these settings are gonna be super crucial because these space stations are flying close to eight kilometers per second. And we wanna freeze them in time so the image is nice and crisp, but we don't wanna over or under expose the image so it's not too bright or too dark. And I started looking around online to figure out if anybody had any guides or similar setups with example settings that they used. And fortunately for me, there's this lovely channel called Cellist on the Roof Astro, where she has a fantastic guide on shooting the ISS, the technique that I'm going to be using is hers, and some suggestions on the different settings to use. So that was fantastic. So with her default settings in mind, I started looking at different ISS passes so I could really dial in the exposure and gain that I specifically wanted to use. And these were an excellent opportunity to try that new technique as well, which is very different than the way that I was doing before where I was holding the OTA with my hands uh, with the DSLR on the back, which was kind of a hassle to try and do. Uh, but one thing that was kind of neat during these demo runs was that these are all occurring at dawn and dusk. So the satellites are lit, but not the Earth. And I actually saw a train of Starlink satellites, which it was my first time seeing those. So that was really, really cool too. So once I had everything basically dialed in, I started to eye and spot the station to figure out when the next good pass was gonna be. And there was a 77 degree one that was not too far away. And that was really good too, because there was a bunch of visiting vehicles at the ISS. So there's a ton of things, including Starliner, that I wanted to try and capture and resolve with the telescope. Uh, the only, Potential hiccup in that plan though was that there was something in the Atlantic coming up into the Gulf that uh, Was probably gonna stop a bunch of that from happening. It was hurricane barrel uh, not a very big one, but a pretty early one and uh, Something that was obviously gonna bring a ton of clouds to the area So I was nervously watching the forecast for quite a bit. It was changing hour by hour um, and Eventually it got up here and a cold front from the northwest came in and deflected barrel a little bit and actually got me this little sliver and an opportunity to shoot this. There it is right there. Here she comes. Just went down over that way, but we do have a pretty dang clear sky, though the uh, seeing's not supposed to be too great right now. But all in all, we'll see how all that turned out. Let's go, look at that. 
Look at that. This is gonna be a good one. This is gonna be a good one. And it was so good. It was so good. I love this video. I, I love this video. This is the frame sequence put together into a video with me plucking out the bad ones that have worked because I'm moving the telescope a little bit too much. But there's just so much detail here and there's a bunch of consecutive good frames too so that I can actually do the five image stacks like this which are fantastic. Uh, uh, Maxar's satellite also has some images so that we can compare for structure. And at the top there, there's the Boeing Starliner, which is talk of the town for a little while here. Um, it's still up there right now. We're gonna see when they actually depart. They're working through some issues and stuff, but that's on there, very apparent. There is the exposed facilities module with the form there on the left, you can see. A progress module back there at the end. The secondary array, very visible, part of it shadowed. The logistics modules on the sides, uh, that little central joint and everything there, and then some of the little small angled arrays on the side that was neat to see. Um, there's also some things that we can't see based on orientation, dragon and another progress, but we do see the stuff that's pointed to us in this like Soyuz stack, uh, which is more apparent whenever you actually like look at the stereoscopic effect. Uh, based on like the actual progression of the video. You can see it in relation to that like end bit there and how it moves, which is also really cool. Really, really cool. But this is our result for the ISS. It is awesome. So uh, with that done, we're gonna move over to the Chinese space station, which I also just figured out is that a very different uh, orbital inclination than the ISS. So for the ISS, based on its inclination, it's actually gonna go uh, be available to image by a lot of different latitudes here. But the Tiangong or the CSS is a substantially lower orbital inclination, meaning it's not really visible to places like, uh, like Germany and the UK and stuff for the most part, at least according to the simulations and stuff. So I thought that was interesting and it was unexpected. Um, but it's also kind of harder to image too. Uh, it's, it's quite a bit smaller than the ISS. This comparison image doesn't necessarily do it justice because the solar panels aren't visible on this drawing for whatever reason for the Chinese space station. But it's quite a bit smaller, uh, meaning it's a little bit dimmer. So I wanted to try and take a different approach for this one, something that I also hadn't done before and that is a transit of the space station behind either or in front of either the sun or the moon. So I looked at some transit finder websites and was able to find a sun one for my, uh, my approximate local area. Had to drive a little bit for it, but there was a good opportunity uh, to me, or for me to test this out. The seeing was also really good as well, which was unexpected, but very welcomed. Uh, making this like a super prime like opportunity here, uh, which was good. This is actually my second try at it um, because I just, I think I just whiffed the first one. I don't know if I messed up on timing, but this time we've got two scopes, got a solar filter. We're doing white light for the new big boy. And we had two set up trying to image it here. Um, sort of counterintuitively, I have the big one at a wider field with a DSLR, so we're not actually in like a super maximal resolution setup. Uh, and then a smaller one, uh, the smaller one with the actual planetary camera for higher frame rates. Uh, just because I don't know if it's actually gonna pass directly through the middle point of the sun based on my positioning. And I wanted to guarantee that I got it this time. So here's the, the clip of it running. Did you catch it? Here, we'll play it a little bit slower. three frames. We only got three frames of it in there, but within those three, we do have enough detail to, to look at the structure of it, which is good. We've obviously got the solar panels on the top and bottom with that central truss structure, and then the visiting vehicle on the left. But I think if you separate it, like slice it based on the solar panels, you can also see the, the panels on the left side a little bit, or at least their impact to the darkness here. 
Doesn't look like there was a visiting vehicle on the right though, uh, at least within our image data. Doesn't seem to be the case. But there we go, both stations. Um, while the seeing was really good, I did also try a maximal magnification, like resolution configuration for that sunspot. Um, and that ended up looking really nice. Uh, and it, it reminded me of something which gives me an idea for the next video. So stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching, guys. See ya.